So I'm, I'm going to use the seven components and the, the bus driver metaphor to kind of walk through those. Okay? There's seven components. We're going to wind up spending a lot more time on component one than we do on the others because there's things that you're going to do with every single component along the way. I'm going to use component one to explain them. Cool? But you need to know where to get this stuff because remember I told you drink it from a fire hose, right? Okay. This address you need to write down. Okay, out of curiosity, how many of you would characterize yourselves as visual learners? Okay, brilliant. So seeing the address, you might be able to picture that in your head, but generally it tends to have far too much detail. So let me give you some visuals that are going to help you. Okay? If you go to the College of Education website, which is education.ucf.edu, and click here, click for students. That'll take you to this page. Okay. From here, you want to click on clinical experiences. Click that, it'll take you to the clinical experiences page. Find internship to students in the header. Click that, and then on the menu that pops up on the side, click teacher work samples. And it'll take you to the teacher work sample page. Couple of things about this web page. This web page is the primary source for information on the teacher work sample. Now, I made sure to really walk through that whole process and to give you time to write down that address because if you can't find the teacher work sample web page, none of the other stuff in this file is going to help you, right? But if you can get to the teacher work sample web page, there's a whole list of resources. First, the guidelines and directions and the rubric that are in your syllabus are printed separately on the web page so you can go to them directly. Personally, paper copies of stuff always drives me crazy. I need it digitally or it doesn't work for me. So there it is. Um, then under the primary supporting materials, I've got all kinds of things for you. There's a template. It's a Microsoft Word document where you open it up where it says, begin your compository or begin your reflective content here you type your reflective content like it's very self-explanatory where you need a bullet list of items that file has a bullet list of items where you need a table that that file has a table so that can be very helpful it also has the TWS graph maker which I'll talk about in a second has these seminar slides now what you don't see here is I haven't thrown a whole lot of text up there yet, have I? That's all on the hidden slides. So all the text that you need to read to remind yourself of what, what we've talked about is in that PDF file of the slides that's hosted on the website. It, it is about a, a seven meg file, so it's a little bit big, but it's also kind of graphics intensive, so you do what you can. Um, there's also some frequently asked questions uh, and then an example teacher work sample. I'll show you that in a, in a little bit at the end of component one. The example teacher work sample with and without comments. All that stuff, that is the stuff that's going to tell you how to do this and give you all the pointers you need. So, everybody feel a little bit better about drinking from the fire hose right now? You don't have to catch it all. But I really want you to focus in on the high points. Can you do that for me? All right. Now, remember I said TWS Graph Maker, right? How many of you love graphs? Sweet, data geeks. How many of you see something like this and have a panic attack? Yes, outstanding. I've got your back. It's cool. I'm a big enough data geek that I don't have to make you do any of this stuff. Okay? So the teacher, uh, the teacher work sample Graph Maker. The Graph Maker, you could, you could even go home and download it today you want to use it from day one. Right now, I'll tell you about this spot. This is where you put information about yourself. Pretty self-explanatory, right? But I want to use this spot to explain how the graph maker's laid out. See, there's, there's explanatory notes all over the document. Please read them. Just as a small favor to me. The, uh, the gray boxes above where you fill stuff in gives you instructions on what goes in those boxes, right? 
So if, for example, the TWS ID, if you roll over that, it, it gives you a note explaining how the TWS ID is put together. Basically, it uses three letters of your last name and your first initial. So I'm Matt Lavery, so my TWS ID is LAVEM, right? Whether you're getting a bachelor's or master, a four-letter program code, uh, there's a rollover note for that, and there's also a, a, a slide in the PDF that you can look at that has all those. The year, the semester, and then the section of internship that you're registered for. That stuff comes off of my UCF. Pretty clear, right? Not scary? All right, rock on. Let me tell you a note about the graph maker. You must upload the graph maker with your final teacher work sample. Now, the graph maker is designed to make your life as easy as possible. It really, really is. All the graphs that you need to include in your teacher work sample are produced automatically by the graph maker. All the graphs that you might want to include in the teacher work sample are produced automatically by the graph maker. The graph maker is designed to work with any version of Microsoft Excel 97 or later on a Windows machine or a Mac. In order to give it that capability, in order to give it that backward compatibility and, and, and flexibility, platform flexibility, uh, it has to use formulas that only Excel has. So it won't work on iWorks numbers or whatever the one is that comes with your Mac. It's free, but it doesn't work with that. Um, it doesn't work with OpenOffice, and, and if you're losing, using, is Lotus 123 still around? I don't even know. It needs to be Microsoft Excel, but the great thing about Microsoft Excel is that every school you're going to be in is almost guaranteed to have that. And if they don't, we've got it here for student use. Come to a lab, you're golden. Contextual factors is the first component. Remember, effective teachers know their students. Contextual factors is the first component because the context is always first. How many kindergarten folks do we have in the room? Okay, sweet. How many high school folks do we have in the room? Okay, now if you don't think that contextual factors matter, all you high school folks, please hand your lesson plans to the kindergarten folks, kindergartners. You wanna do that? Sure, you can teach chemistry. No worries, covalent bonds and stuff. No, not a problem, right? <laughs> high schoolers, do you wanna, you wanna do the, the kindergarten lesson plans? Sure the students yeah, sure. <laughs> if you wanna have some behavior problems, maybe. Um, so context really, really matters. Every classroom, every school, every student is different. This is how you know where to pick them up. See, the bus, the bus metaphor is such a great metaphor. Uh, bus drivers have this, this flexibility, right? That's my bus stop. Be there or you're not going to school. Wouldn't that be great flexibility to have? This is where we're starting. I'm sorry that you don't have this material ma mastered yet, but this is where we're starting. Catch up if you can. Doesn't that just sound mean? Even though I'm trying to say it in a ple pleasant way, it sounds mean. The bus driver sets a bus stop. We have to go to wherever the kids are to pick them up. And you won't know where to pick your kids up unless you study the context. Make sense? Now, this written component is going to include some of that context that you explore. So you start with the big picture. Describe your community. Then take a step, a step in. Describe the school, including demographics and, and number of students and all that stuff. Then take a step in. Describe the students that you work with. Describe their demographics and class size and how many classes and all that. And then you take another step in and talk about the individual unique learning needs of individual students. What kind of individual student needs might I be talking about there? Oh, raise your hands, please. Yes, ma'am. Say again. 
the least restrictive environment. So students who uh, have a disability, who have an IEP, an individualized education plan, are guaranteed the least restrictive environment, which means no matter what kind of classroom you're, you're, you're in, you have a distinct possibility of having ESE students in your class. What's another one? Another unique individual student learning need. Yes, ma'am. ESOL, English for Speakers of Other Languages. If you have an English language learner in your class, you have to accommodate those needs. So you have to know what those needs are, don't you? Okay. Those are the first two that come to mind, right? Because there's paperwork involved. In what other ways are your students different that there might not be paperwork about? Yes, ma'am. Single parent, single parent families might have an impact. Yeah. Culture, religion, any sort of cultural background might have an impact on how things operate in your classroom. What other factors do we have? Yeah. Their home environment, whether or not they have one. Families in transition is the new key phrase. If you hear someone talking about fit children, those are children who don't have a home. They might be living out of a hotel or a car or with a family member or a family friend. They don't have a place to call their own. Might that affect their performance in your classroom? Yeah. And remember earlier when I asked you how many of you are visual learners? How many of you are not visual learners? Might that be an important difference to, to, to find out and take note of? So this context is huge. You also start with the, the graph maker. I, I know, that doesn't make any sense. Why am, I, why am I putting that in Excel? Let me show you. There's a spot right here where you put down the demographics of the student population at the school. Okay. Now, admittedly, this is one of the difficult pieces of information for some candidates to find. I remember when I taught in Osceola County, every school had a, a demographic profile that had all this information, really readily available. I knew those numbers for the district and for the school. It's on the district website, right? Not every district has that information that readily available. Try to find one of those readily available sources. Try to find a, a document that someone has prepared that reflects that. But if you can't find that, there is a way to figure that out by yourself. Would you like me to show you? All right, brilliant. You might have seen this website before, right? Schoolgrades.fldoe.org. Uh, you can calculate the percentage, the demographic factors for your school here. Go to your school accountability reports. When you click that, the report you want is AYP. Okay. Then click the county that you're interested in. For the sake of example, I'm going to use my alma mater. I graduated from Oviedo High School in 92. <sighs> Please don't tell me where you were in 92. <laughs> so uh, Oviedo High School is in Seminole County, so I've checked that. I scroll down, choose last year, and over here, it'll make the list a little bit shorter if I click the kind of school I'm after. Okay? So I've clicked high school there. Then click continue. You got the visuals? Okay, see how this works? Now, this is where I choose my school, click Submit, and I get my AYP report, which doesn't tell me anything of what I need to know. Okay, But this is the right path to go. What I want is the detailed report. And when I get the detailed report, I need to click that button too to see the number of students in each group. Then finally, I get this. Now, I want you to notice this column gives me the number of students enrolled that are supposed to take the reading FCAT. Now, in a middle school, that should be everybody, right? How many of you are at a middle school? All right, sweet. So for that very, very, very small segment of this population, you're set. But for everybody else, remember that number is approximately half of the sto total student population. Elementary schools are K through 5. K1 and 2 don't take the FCAT. High schools are 9 through 12. 11 and 12 don't take the FCAT unless they failed it in 10th grade. So these numbers are approximate, 
But all you have to do is take the number in one of your demographic subgroups, divide by the total, multiply by 100, there's your number to put right into the spreadsheet. Okay? If you need to see the math, download the file from the website because the math is shown there for you. Okay? But using this, I can calculate the percent of that school population that's white, black, Hispanic, Asian, and American Indian for the teacher work sample because in Florida, the incidence of those two particular subgroups are so low, they've been collapsed into a single subgroup that's called other. Economically disadvantaged, English language learners, and students with disabilities. All the subgroups that you're interested in looking at are right there for you. Cool trick? Do you think you might use that? Yes. All right, brilliant. Now, after you enter the school information, down here is a spot to enter information about the students that you are serving. Real quick, I need to give you a couple of pointers about this section. Every student needs to have an anonymous student identifier. You're not allowed to use names in your teacher work sample. Even Johnny, everybody's favorite made up student name, don't use it. Initials are okay. For my example, I use S and a number. Um, then if they're in a class or a group, you fill in a number one through eight for that. Uh, so first period, second period, third period, whatever, if you're at a secondary level, or at an elementary level, if you have groups, if, if you're departmentalized in your placement, you're doing the math for both fifth grade classes, you might do a one and two so that you can track the two different classes. Um, but for most elementary classrooms where you'll have 18 students or so, you can just put a one or leave it blank, it won't, it won't matter. Gender, M for male, F for female, you have to enter it the way that it says on the graph maker, otherwise they won't get captured and put in your graph. Case in point, see how uh, under ESE, on the screenshot, I've only got two students with a disability. I can't just put yes, yes, and leave the others blank, or my students without a disability will never get graphed. Okay? So fill it in, don't skip rows, because that messes it up, but follow the instructions and you'll be golden. So that demographic information will give you this. So you'll get demographics of the students that you serve so you can compare that to the school and see if your class is significantly different than, than the school population.